Sam was working in a pet shop to face his fears. The reason he had a fear of birds was when he grew up in his town. Every time someone died in a mysterious way, he would see a bird follow him. He knew that if he worked in a pet shop all day, then it would break the random act of seeing a bird follow him. It was advice he took from his doctor in a local psych ward. He worried would it only cause more people to get killed, but luckily for five years now he hadn't experienced any bird following him and there was no mysterious death in his town. While Sam spent time in a local psych ward, he was trying to explain his situation. He eventually knew that all the doctors would think he was crazy if he kept believing when a bird followed him there would be a mysterious death. So what he did was begin to tell the doctors he must have been going through some sort of breakdown, but he knows now that of course what he believed back then wasn't true and he doesn't believe it now. Sam was on his laptop getting ready for the five year anniversary party of the pet shop. He was finishing the final touches, sending out emails to his customer list, reminding them that there will be free gifts and snacks all day tomorrow, celebrating five years of being in business. The next day the shop was full of customers, enjoying the party. Sam was so happy that his plan had worked. He first realized it five years ago when he did what his first doctor said. It isn't real. The birds are not connected to any deaths. That is when the deaths stopped. He smiled over at his doctor who treated him in the psych ward while opening a bird cage. He whispered, I believe the birds are responsible for deaths. Suddenly the birds followed Sam out of the shop and just before the birds could reach the door, he made sure to run and close it, watching everyone in the store drop, dead. Then he smiled and said to himself, they should have believed me. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. There were four random strangers chosen to share in a prize of $100,000 if any one of them solved a puzzle. It started with a simple phone call. Sarah was in her office when she got the call. Hello, this is a genuine request. You're under no obligation to say yes, but you and three other people are invited to take part in a puzzle. If you or any of the rest of the participants solve the puzzle, ye will all share in the prize of $100,000. That's giving ye all exactly $25,000 each. That is a nice pay pack for just a few minutes work. If you would like to participate, then all you have to do is arrive at Madison Hotel on Grove Street at 6 p.m. this evening. There is an elevator on the ground floor. Just wait outside that elevator for the door to open. Then please enter with the rest of the participants. You will all know that ye are there for the puzzle, don't worry. The same phone call arrived for Jack, who was in the gym working out. Tony got his call while out walking, and Mary got her call while watching TV. They all agreed to take part in the puzzle. That evening at 6pm, they were all waiting outside the elevator, waiting for it to open excited with the chance of pocketing $25,000 each if any of them solved the puzzle. 
suddenly the elevator doors opened, and they all stepped inside. The elevator started going up, and a voice came through the speaker. Hello, player. Thank you very much for taking part in this puzzle that enables you to have a chance of winning $25,000 each. The question to the puzzle is simple. The floors of this hotel have various occupants at different times, sometimes, but other times not as much. But what button in this elevator is pressed the most? If you can't answer by the time we reach the top floor, you will be shown the answer on the display in the elevator, but unfortunately you will lose out in the money. This is the most important rule. If you give a wrong answer, you will all lose the game. Good luck. The elevator started going up to the top floor. Everyone started talking about it trying to solve the puzzle. It sounded so complicated, especially when there were different numbers of people staying in different floors at different times. Everyone knew there was 15 floors in the hotel, so Sarah shouted first floor before it hit 15. They all hoped the answer was right. Then suddenly the voice came back and said, I am very sorry. You were very close, but the answer is ground floor. Because everyone has to go to the ground floor. As promised, we will show you the answer, which is everyone has to go to the ground floor. Suddenly the elevator made a bang and started falling faster and faster and everyone in it started screaming until it crashed to the floor and they were all killed. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Memento Mori, Stuart whispered the phrase to himself over and over as he picked both of his bags. The first was his gym bag, which he would be utilizing this morning. The second was his medicine bag, which he would use later tonight. Once both bags were packed, he mixed his pre-workout blend to enhance his gym session slung his gym bag over his shoulder and walked out his bedroom. The brilliant sunshine hurt his eyes as he emerged from the poorly lit sanctuary he called his room. As he closed and locked his front door, the wind picked up and rustled the door. Squinting, he looked up at the sky. A bird of some sort circled his garden. He imagined it to be a bird of prey looking for a meal to swoop down and capture. This thought made him smile. What a life such a bird must live, taking life as when it sees fit. The drive to the gym followed the same routine every day, with hardcore rock thumping from the speakers to rile him up. Once completed, more routine followed, with a shower and protein shake while getting dressed. The drive home would be the complete opposite of the previous trip, as Stuart would listen to softer soul music and take in the beautiful trees that lined the roads. Often he would even give a dollar or two to a homeless person that would come tapping on his window for change. Humans are creatures of habit, and Stuart is no different. The only difference in the routine of the day would be the night festivities 
of this particular evening. Most nights he would cook dinner, eat in front of the television, and then proceed to watch more television in his bedroom. Tonight, however, was the 42nd Thursday of the year, an arbitrary fact to most, but not to Stuart. Tonight was his night to indulge, just as he let out the maniac in himself on the drive to Jim. Tonight was the night he let the maniac out, loose on the world. People do not change much from youth to adulthood. Some maturity occurs, but the general character and behaviour of the individual remains. Stuart had always wanted to help the world, at least in a way that he saw fit. As a youth this involved cleansing his neighbourhood of stray dogs and cats, he took no actual pleasure in the act, no more so than a postman would rejoice delivering mail. He simply felt it was something to be done. As he did it over the years, his method of euthanization had evolved from bludgeoning the animals to squeezing their necks until he heard the sick pop of confirmation that the neck had broken. But as all things in life evolve, so did his target for cleansing. Stuart had grown to realize that in order to cleanse the world, it was not dogs and cats that needed to be cleaned, it was the people. The people were the sickness. 41 Thursdays before the chosen night meant that he knew exactly what he was doing. He planned out his routines as well as who his patients would be. Access to the sick was yet more proof that people cared not one bit about the sick. Throughout the course of his planning, he would walk into various hospitals, talking to the nurses, he would gain the knowledge of whether they would still be in need of his services when the glorious night came. The ease and success of his planning was yet more proof given to him from God that this was indeed his mission in life. He worked from home as an architect, but Stuart had always wanted to be a doctor. He may not have the qualifications, but the work he did was equally as important. The only difference that Stuart saw between himself and traditional doctors were the clothes they wore. His choice of dress for the task at hand was a heavy overcoat paired with an authentic 1620s plague mask. After all, he couldn't risk getting the sicknesses. Once home from the gym, Stuart cooked and ate before taking a nap in preparation for the big night. He set an alarm for midnight, but the excitement for the evening woke him up 15 minutes before the scheduled time. He lay in his bed in the dark for a moment. He felt at peace in the dark. He looked around in the darkness at the outlines of the furniture in his room. His light breathing was the only sound around him. He flexed his toes and arched his back to stretch the sleep away. He sat up straight in the darkness. Stuart was ready to begin his night of work. Memento mori, he proclaimed to the darkness. The patrons of St. Benaba's ward, that for the mentally ill, were long asleep by the time the wind blew Stuart through the doors. He had his medicine bag in hand and the plague mask on as he sat beside his first patient. He never rushed the process. Each patient was as important and deserving as the next. Stuart picked up the patient chart and read the name out loud. James, I absolve you of your sins. May God have mercy on your soul. Memento mori. And with that, Stuart inserted the needle deep into the arm of sleeping James. The pancreonium bromide slowly left the syringe and set to work causing powerless and respiratory arrest. This method of cleansing was the best. Stuart had found prior to this. He had held a pillow over the face of his patients. He moves from patient to patient with the obvious speed of a very experienced executioner. As he injects the saving liquid into his last patient, her eyes suddenly shoot open and stare into the hollow eye sockets of the mask. Memento Mori. 
Stuart tells her as she looks at him in confusion. All she manages out is Birdman, before her muscles lock up and her breathing stops. He strokes her hair gently and admires his work. She is silent and he knows he has done a good job. God's work. Packing his utensils back into his bag, he heads back home. He has work tomorrow. Life goes on. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content.